Hi everyone, let's bring the picture down so you can see who we're talking about today. There you go, we're talking about this young man here, Nicky Somerby today. Moments in time with Mr. Nicky Somerby, obviously son of our legend. A legend in his own, his own little space, isn't he? Nicky Somerby as well, he's one of our ex-players, isn't he? So we've got to love him I mean, as, a, as an ex-City player. Please welcome to this latest Citizen Vlog, City Past, uh, a City Moments in Time. Please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button. That'd be fantastic. Tell your friends, more the merrier. Please push those notification, that notification button and make sure your notifications are set to public uh, so you get to see all these things. Right, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one, this. I mean, if you watch any of my vlogs, I did keep sort of scrapbooks between 90, 1990 and 1995. So we've got a little bit of the, uh, actually caught the uh, some of Nicky's early season um uh, wandering so i'm going to use that and obviously some other programs etc so i've looked at nicky summerby yeah he was transferred from swindon for one and a half million pounds on the 22nd of june 1994 so that's when he joined city uh, his dad mike uh, cost thirty five thousand from swindon i think so thirty five thousand to one and a half million i don't know what the inflation is on that but it's quite interesting wasn't it uh he was born himself in the 26th of august 1971 nicky summerby in Altrincham, which is where I'm based at the moment, Altrincham, so he's born somewhere around here. Uh, and he moved to Sunderland on the 14th of November 1997, so he was at City just over three years. So he joined 22nd of June 94, uh, moved to Sunderland 14th of November 1997, more or less. I mean, we can't always be specific on dates of transfers, you know, sometimes we, we have to go with what we're given. They may, may not be... Uh, Maybe been planned for a week or two before, but uh, they're the dates we've got. Right, so yeah, it was a swap with Craig Russell uh, to Sunderland, which is unusual. Obviously, the, I'll, we'll bring Craig Russell I'll have, a, I'll have a brief appearance later on at the end of the vlog. Obviously, when uh, it was a more of a swap deal, so it was a, he was uh, he was transferred for a, a one million estimate. So we lost half a million pound on 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 figures, but obviously we didn't even get any cash then because it was a, a swap with Craig Russell from Sunderland to City at the time. Perhaps we'll do one on him as well. Yeah, so interesting enough. I mean, fan wise, I think I think we were all okay about it. I think uh, had he played against, I think he'd played against City. It was it was seemed okay, and that's what we had tended to do in those days. If, uh, if anyone played half decent against us, we'd sign them a, a few weeks later. And just looking at the King of the Kipaks from uh, issue thirty nine, August nineteen ninety four. A very very brief thing uh, about what we bought. Only one buy so far, but a good one in Nicky Summerby. A lot of people are disappointed though that there's not been more, particularly after see, seeing the talent available in the World Cup. And we'll go on to this in a minute. Losing Roadcastle was a shock, although there's obviously more to it than we're being told. Funny that, there's a few players for sale. So we sell one who wasn't a complete clear out. We sell one who wasn't a complete clear out wasn't really on the cards, was it? So yeah, I mean obviously we bought with uh, Brian Horton uh, Francis Lee etc this this was a great new adventure wasn't it I mean this is uh, from the time when he's when he signed I've got an image of it he just gets on the team squad right at the end Nicky Somerby there from that season he's got a great image of him there with old, you know the old, he's not holding the scarf is he for any Lee and Brian Orton are holding the city scarf up and Nicky Somerby's in the middle there I'm just reading the quotes Nicky signs with a plea he completed his one and a half million move and said I don't want to be known as the second Mike Summerby. It was he didn't he didn't don't worry about that, Nicky. The talented midfielder signed a three year contract. But some of his son of the former England national Mike, who won almost every honour in the game with City, said the principal reason I wanted City wasn't because of my father's success there. I just feel they're a club who are going places. I don't want to be known as the second Mike Summerby, but the first Nicky Summerby. So there you go, that's his comments. And obviously there's just a piece, and obviously that says that was a, we were a little bit shocked that uh, David Roadcastle went and obviously became the first victim of the first competition for places, why, why Rocky had to go. But that's another story which we'll join on another day. But it, interestingly enough, it was uh, featured, so I thought I'd just show that with you on the thing. Yeah, so that was his first game. His first game for City was... Um, away at Arsenal his league debut for City was a was a, a 3 nil defeat at Arsenal on the uh, 20th of August 1994 and it wasn't until the 5th of October 1994 he was never a prolific goal scorer Nicky Sullivan but his first goal came against Barnet in the second leg of the um, 
I think it was a Coca-Cola Cup at the time. Yeah, we'd lost the first. We'd, we'd lost the first leg to Barnet one nil, uh, but fortunately we turned it around in the second leg. I mean, this is the uh, sort of scrapbook fun thing, and uh, we do get an image of Nicky somewhere there scoring his goal. Obviously, it's a four-one victory against Barnet, but that was his uh, first goal at Main Road in the second leg. So obviously, you get an image of there Nicky, Nicky somewhere being action against Barnet. I mean, earlier earlier in the season, you'd had. Obviously, the second game of the season, you'd had a. Now you know me; I don't pull my programs apart, so I've got a big, massive poster in the middle, Nicky Summerby. So I can't really show you too much because I'm not going to take the poster out. So there is a program later on that I'm not showing you because some someone nicked me centre pages. I don't know where they've gone. I don't know where Nicky Summerby's gone. I think my, my lad might have had it or something like that. So I'm a bit disappointed because obviously I wouldn't be able to show you that. So yeah, he did. He did get the uh, program treatment, obviously. And, and, uh, sort of image image of Nicky Summerby. Yeah, so the 5th of October was his actual first goal. Um, on the 8th of October, he was featured on the front cover there, wearing the kit. So that's the kit we wore at the time, you remember that? And his second goal came at the end of October. And again, it was in the Coca-Cola Cup. So he's doing quite, you know, he's, he obviously liked his little cup competition. So he didn't score a glut full of uh, league of league goals. Obviously, this is that sort of action from uh, QP, the QPR game in the Coca-Cola Cup. Which won 4-3, a cracking game. And there's, there's the, again, scoring the goal. Uh, Nicky Summer will be there, good image of him scoring the goal there against QPR so he did tend to sort of like the uh, the actual Coca-Cola Cup by the looks of it and obviously we didn't, didn't go on to win it or anything silly like that did we is uh, he was part of the City team unfortunately in November that went to Old Trafford and lost but I'm not going to show you the scrap scrapbook on that it's too depressing uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got that in one of the scrapbooks, and it's it's too much red on that for me. Uh, it was United five City nil on the tenth of November, nineteen ninety four. We're absolutely destroyed, and yeah, I mean that was really disappointing. Uh, we've got another image of him in a look at the shirt there. There's, there's one I'll show you later. The, I think I think they only had a couple of these training shirts. I mean, you can call it training shirts. What we'd buy, wouldn't it? For uh, so that's taken from the twenty fifth of February, nineteen ninety five. So well into his first season. But a great image in this sort of training top, which which does does appear again later on. Yeah, his first league goal then he scored in the milk uh, milk cup, Coca Cola cup, or milk was it Coca Cola? Anyway, well, it was the league cup. Let's call it the league cup, and we're safe then, aren't we? So his first league goal was actually against Liverpool in April nineteen ninety five, and it was actually a two one win against Liverpool. So which was absolutely fantastic. There's him being uh, celebrated in the Liverpool game. A 2-1 win for City. So that was his actual first game. doesn't look overly impressed, does he? <laughs> it's, uh, perhaps he's been a bit rough, uh, but I don't know. He does look overly happy. And there's the sort of after just the, the goal, he's despairing. That's how they put the ball in the Liverpool net. So there, that was his first uh, league goal. was actually took him to April the 14th, 1995. And obviously, uh, it was an interesting season, that, wasn't it? It was an interesting season. But obviously it took us into 1995-1996. And he does feature on the team squad in 1995-1996. He's actually next next to a lad called Scott. If you remember remember uh, Scott, that was his first name. Scott Thomas. Scott Thomas. So if you look at the... He's actually there. So obviously there's Nicky Summerman for the, for the second season with City. His first season was okay. I think the thing about his first season, he was... He did some okay. I mean, I think it was a team thing. He seemed to do get a lot of seven out of tens when they looked through the ratings on the matches. So he did okay. He wasn't outstanding, as I said. He's not. He was never a prolific goal scorer, whoever he was. And um, but when uh, when he did score low, like five or ten, five out of tens and six out of tens, it was a whole team thing. Like the United game, the five 0 defeat. I think he scored five out of ten, but all the players did. So he sort of stumbled with the team and sort of improved with the team without ever being really fantastically outstand, uh, outstanding really so obviously there's uh, a bit of psychology a little piece on the um, this is now the 4th November 1995 so he was struggling a little bit at that stage and it just goes on to say Nicky Summerby has admitted that Alan Ball was justified in taking him out of the firing line 
after City's traumatic start of the season. And don't forget, the Horton had gone now. Alan Ball had been brought in. A spell in the reserves and a place on the first team bench uh, for six successive games has enabled the young wingers to see the game from a different perspective. And as a result, he returned to senior action with renewed confidence and determination. The manager took the decision to rest Sullivan after he had started the first five matches of the season. I believe the manager had two things in mind to get my back up and to get me to see my situation from a different point of view. It worked on both counts. I probably deserved to be left out at that stage, but it made me very determined to win back my first team place. So, yeah. And interestingly enough, um, the next sort of next sort of game after that against Bolton at home, he actually scored again. He got scored against City versus Bolton. So, and that was after um, almost eight hours of City not scoring a goal, which, you know, I'm sure we've probably equaled that at some stage with certain other managers, but... Uh, that was a shock at the time under Alan Ball, and we'd gone seven, and we, we actually managed to beat Bolton 1-0, uh, thanks to a Nicky Summerby goal, which obviously uh, lift, lifted the spirits a little bit, lifted, uh, I mean, with a lot of bottles of champagne there for Francis Lee, even, even Francis Lee's getting lifted by it, but yeah, he managed to, uh, again, be congratulated, he looks a bit happier there, doesn't he, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he was uh, absolutely... Uh, dead chuck but he does look a little bit happier there anyway by scoring one nil against Bolton so he actually that kick up the arse seemed to do him okay but again he, he sort of went on to do various things I've got another image of, uh, of that top but it's a different it's a dark top now that was white last time with the background wasn't it so obviously we perhaps only had one sort of design for the training tops these uh, training tops and we just sort of did different colours of it I mean it seems, seems about normal for City in those days wasn't it and the 1995-96 season we had another little centre thing with Nicky which I can show you because it's not a big big fancy pull out this was from the 27th of October 1996 which uh, obviously again the kits we don't change the kits much do we <laughs> same kit there there we go same thing yeah, so that was a little post you could put that obviously that was in there. I had that from the season before as well, but obviously that disappeared somewhere. So I'm, I'm gonna have to have words with my lad as well. November 1996, uh, I think that was after the Bolton game, wasn't it? Uh, that kit, remember that kit? Great image of them there against this is the uh, Oxford United game. But do you remember that kit at all? I don't know. I mean, it's pretty shocking. I do like maroon, I do like the maroon kits, but not that version of it i mean some people will like that believe it or not but there you go that's how it is isn't it with that yeah so then we look at the you go on to the blues review which is obviously for the for the for the full season which obviously this was to be obviously his final season or part of the season or whatever you know he actually wasn't going to play in it all the way through was he and obviously now you're talking um, frank clark aren't you talking frank clark and then eventually you'll be talking uh phil neal as well is it Phil Neal? Yeah, he'll be talking Phil Neal as well. So he's, he's certainly going through the managers. Um, and he scored in a defeat against Tranmere at home. Another another low point. Again, we've got the Zoom shooting there. But we got beat by Tranmere at home. 2-1 uh, on the 23rd of November 1996. But we did actually score in that. I can show you, show you most of Nicky's goals because he didn't, he didn't score that many. Some players I can't do because there's far too many of them. But you can actually do it with Nicky. And then the next thing, again, again, this cup thing, he actually, uh, this time it's the FA Cup this season where he scored in a couple of couple of games. This was uh, Brentford away in the FA Cup in the 25th of January 1997. Nicky finds a sting to kill the bees. So, there's, again, celebrates a little bit more, a little bit more uh, animated, I think, in that thing. And then he went on, on the 22nd of June 1997. Um, he actually scored again in another another cup game, a home FA Cup game against Watford. So again in the FA Cup. So there's his with his, his pole scoring, Nicky Summerby. That's a three one win over Watford in the fifth of February nineteen ninety seven. And that brought us to um playing playing a little team called Swindon Town, which obviously was his ex club. So I mean obviously we've, that was on the twenty second of February nineteen ninety seven. So Swin playing Swindon Town, and again, um, yeah, yeah, he did. He actually scored. I think there's something in the program notes as well about that about uh, Nicky Summerby. Uh, we have a look in here. Yeah, Frank Clark's complaining about our our results, etc. 
And there's a little piece from uh, Buzzer. Buzzer aims to wipe out the only unhappy memory of his old club. So he goes on to say, Nicky Somerby spent seven happy seasons at Swindon Town, but he would love to put one over his old club today. He joined the Wiltshire outfit as an apprentice and enjoys some golden moments, making 112 appearances before joining City. I have a lot of good memories of my time at the county ground, although they do not include my last visit there, he ruthlessly recalled. That was in November when the Blues lost 2-0. So we'd gone, in, we'd gone and lost 2-0 at uh, Swindon back in November during the spell when little was going right. Like a lot of teams we met around that time, we did not really give Swindon a game that day. So yeah, and we did give them a game this day because we actually beat them beat them 3-1. Uh, so there's actually no image of, uh, which you think there would be in the evening news. I mean, he was just obviously playing against his old team, but we beat Swindon 3-1 and he actually scored one of the goals. So that that was, uh, you know, a bit of, bit of revenge for him, wasn't it? That was a bit of revenge. Uh, and then he's, uh, the only game he ever scored two goals was a game against Grimsby Town, which took place on the 16th of April that season, the 16th of April 1997, a 3-1 win. So again, you've got him scoring the goal and his celebration again a determined look on his face he's never never shown not to be overly happy has he but uh, obviously so again another interesting season where he sort of picked up towards the end and obviously it wasn't the greatest season again for City was it and this is the problem he, he wasn't in a, a team that was really firing all the time was he so he did turn up for the 97-98 season obviously 96-97 was still his last full season with City uh, for the 97 97 98 game he does appear on the on the team photo and he's moved a bit further along this time he's out he's halfway along behind margaret's and that's the look at the squad 97 98 and obviously you've got uh, mr frank clark obviously there with the uh, and yeah obviously he would have problems wouldn't he <laughs> mr frank clark but you say some of the there at the back behind uh, behind mr margaret's and so he was in the team squad and it, again, that was a bit of a flop of a season. It never, he never really got going. Uh, September the 20th was his last full game. So that was a 2-1 defeat at home to Norwich. And October the 22nd was his last game where he appeared as a sub, Stoke City at home. Uh, another 1-0 loss. And then he, he left, obviously, City in early November, the 14th of November 1997. And looking at Frank Clark's little programme notes, this is from... A game against Bradford City on the 22nd of November. This is a game against uh, about his little comments. Not too much more about Craig Russell coming, perhaps, than, uh, than Nicky Summerby. Uh, so he goes, because obviously, as I said, it was a swap deal. Craig's arrival also meant the departure of Nicky Summerby to Sunderland Stadium of Light. The deal was put to us by Peter Reid, the Sunderland manager. We wanted to sign Craig, but without money to spend, this is how it was. We had to negotiate a swap. Nicky joined City in June '94 and has been a good servant to the club. I wish him every success in his new career at the, in the North East. In the circumstances, I believe it was the right move for us to make, especially as it became vital for us to increase our strike force. So, very little said. And I think a lot of the, when I've been looking at a lot of these, managers don't have much to say about when they're getting rid of players. It's just very brief. Thank you. Thank you for your service, etc., etc. So we left in early, but nearly, early November. Um, he nearly came back. Actually, he nearly came back under Kevin Keegan. He actually um, was actually officially classed as a, you know, back to Manchester City. We never played any competitive games. I think he might have played a friendly or two. So he did actually come back, but it never, never quite worked out again. And that's the story of his career with City. Really, he never quite got going, did it? But you know, very few players did sort of create that sort of. Um, that level of consistency at those times for City did they? In, that, in that period it was a hard time I mean he did have one achievement he managed to score goals under four different managers and which is quite an achievement in itself because he didn't he wasn't a prolific goal scorer as I've said so but he did manage to to score goals obviously under uh, Mr Brian Horton Alan Ball Phil Neal and Frank Clark so there's one little achievement for Nicky which is, is pretty amazing so in total his appearances in the league he had 119 appearances in the league 12 as substitute just scored six goals so this is uh, this is why I got to show you most of the goals today and in the cups he made 23 appearances in the league cup and the FA cups uh, two as sub and scored four goals so 10 goals what in what 142 full appearances and 14 sub appearances but it, it was a it was an assist to I don't have this I don't have I, we'd have all the figures on assist now wouldn't we I don't have any figures on assist but uh, yeah Nicky Summerby he, he, 
he doesn't Yes, I don't know. What do you think about Nicky Summer? Let me know in your comments. Um, as I said, I think it was the team at the time, and uh, you know, he would have. There was a lot of pressure on him, wasn't there, with his dad, etc. And uh, he didn't last long, and, and he was there, and he scored goals, and he he had a couple of high moments, didn't he? he had a couple of couple of times that, uh, you know, he uh, he actually did it for us, but nothing nothing overly conclusive. Certainly didn't win any trophies with us like most players in those those days. You know, we had about thirty years where we had players where we didn't win trophies. So, yeah, I quite, I thought Nicky Summer was okay. He was nothing again. He was, he was he was a good average player, wasn't he? In my opinion, he was nothing nothing special. Um, but that was moments in time with Nicky Summer, who joined City on the 22nd of June 1994 and left City on the 14th of November 1997 and left us with some memories didn't we didn't we and uh, as I said his achievement to score under four City managers so that's not bad going anyway thanks for watching this let me know in the comments what you think about Nicky uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Nostalgia underscore movie or at Charles Deneen. I, I try and follow everyone back and I'm on Facebook at Fern Deneen with links to moviegamenostalgia.com next to Nicky there my uh, website, old rare DVDs, movie posters from the 1990s and 2000s, and uh, uh, board games as well. So if you can spare a couple of minutes to laugh a look on moviegamenostalgia.com, a thumbs up to you. And please, it's a bit of a longer one, this, because we have the little scrapbooks and things, usually about 10 or 15 minutes. But it's, uh, Nicky got a little bit extra today because of the scrapbook uh, book element we have. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good rest of day. Have a great one. Look after yourself, look after your friends, look after your family. And more importantly, let's all look after each other. And hopefully join me again for another little citizen past and present or a moments in time, etc. Or a quiz or whatever. Hope you'll, you'll join me again very, very soon. It's Bernie saying goodbye for now. Thanks for watching.